everyone and welcome back to another video. So I've talked about doing this in the past and I thought now is probably a good time to introduce it. And that's doing a series on Power BI. So I know Power BI is obviously slightly stepping away from Excel that we've been primarily focused on in the past. But I felt it was really useful to sort of drop this series in because Power BI gives us some extra um, sorry, say abilities than we have in Excel. So Power BI is a tool from Microsoft uh, so it's a desktop application, but it also allows you to create some really powerful dashboards that are both interactive, and you can also have the ability, uh, down with obviously having the actual accounts to do this, you can actually host your reports online so that users can actually access that and self-serve um, as required. So obviously the limits we have with Excel is obviously everything is contained within one file, and if you want people to be utilizing that file, they could potentially um, disrupt or mess up the data within that file. Power BI allows them uh, a, a report that they can obviously go through, they can filter, they can select different parts on the graphs. And you can see on the screen here that we've got some examples in front of us. So you can see this is just on the Power BI website. So you can see there's some really colorful and interactive charts they've got on there. And you can see it's, it's kind of dynamic we go through to give you a bit of a demonstration really. So you may have access to this if you're working for a company or a large organization, or if you're just working at your own home computer, then obviously you can just download this via the means I'm now going to show. Uh, and, but yeah, Power BI is a really powerful tool. I use it myself to really sort of visualize data that we're sort of putting together in Excel. So I felt it was very beneficial just to share it with you all via this series. So in order to get Power BI, so as I said, if you're working for an organization and you have a company laptop or a company computer, then obviously you might not be able to download via this means. You might have to go to your IT department or you might actually already have access to it and therefore you're coming to this channel to try and find out how to work better with Power BI. If so, just ignore the first couple of minutes and we'll be jumping straight into it. So you can see we've just gone to this web address here. Well, I'll share a link in the description to this video. All you need to do is go onto this website, click download free, so it's a completely free download. And what will happen is you'll likely get a pop-up like this. So I'm using a Windows computer and it'll open up the Windows or the Microsoft Store. Simply you have a button here what just says to download. Once the product is downloaded, you have like this bar that comes across the screen here. All you need to do is click launch. Uh, at that point, you'll have the desktop application installed on your computer and it'll open up and look something like this. So this is the bare bones of Power BI. And then once you've got this, um, like I say, it should look quite familiar to you in terms of yeah, many other Microsoft applications. So you've got the toolbar along the top here, and obviously within each of those uh, tabs, you can see we've got very op various options available to us. Um, again, if you're using like uh, Power BI Pro or other versions that are sort of more uh, for corporations, you will notice slightly some different options you've got available here such as, and I can't remember what their names are, but allowing you to host and publish reports. You might have some more detailed tabs at the top here, even though I can see the publish button here. Um, but like I say, we're using just the desktop, the free personal version uh, to get you started. But all the content that we look at, so any functions, um, filtering of data, is something that's available regardless of what version you're using. So now that you've got Power BI installed on your desktop, the first thing we want to do is actually get some data in there. So in order to do so, and we'll be working with Excel, all we need to do is click on this Excel button here. Or you can select from these uh, buttons obviously in the background available. And all we then need to do is go into uh, wherever you want to get data from. So on my desktop, I have created a, or I thought I had. Oh, it's working, oh, it's going a bit slow. So on my desktop, I've just created a basic folder and I've, in there I've stored a sales, uh, some example sales data. So again, what I'll do is I'll make sure there's a link in the description to this video so that you can go and get that sales data yourself uh, and they, therefore you can sort of replicate this at home as well. So I'm just going to go into my Power BI folder, but obviously you can go to whatever one's relevant for you and you can see all this company sales data here. If I just open that up, you'll then get this pop-up and it will show you each of the tabs available in that workbook. And we've got three here, but that's actually the next video where we're going to be putting multiple bits of data together. So in this first part, I'm going to do something really simple and just pull out the employees table. So when I select that tab, you can see I've got all of the data what's available to me in there. You can see we've got the data, all the data what's available to us here. 
For some reason, you can see that it's actually not picked up the column headings. It's only picked up column one and column two, and then it thinks that the column headings are the first row of data. Uh, don't worry about that too much at the moment. All you need to do is just go load. And you can see it's just going through and loading that data. And then what will happen once that's loaded on is, ah, okay, you can now see that we've got a table on the left-hand side here. So this is what will happen. You have, as you pull more data into your Power BI um, application, you'll have multiple table drop-downs available down this side here. And this is where we can select the fields or information that we want to display on our, like our dashboard that you see here. What I'm going to do, and this sort of covers off a second tip you could say in one video, is because we've got this issue where it's not picking up column headings, what we're going to do is go into the Home tab and we'll go into you know, Transform Data, and then go Transform Data, and it'll open up another window, what is just currently on my second screen as I'm pulling over here. So you can see at the moment, obviously, it's not picking up the correct column headers. All we need to do that is, you see there's a button over the side here, Use First Row as Headers. Simply just select that and you can see it's made that change for us. So that's now been stored. Do close and apply. And once it's refreshed, lots of refreshing going on here, you can see that our employee ID and name is now available. So they are the only two fields in that particular employee's sheet. And again, what you can do is when you're read or naming your sheets within Excel, if you just call them something applicable, um, so then it will give them a, a recognizable sheet slash table name. Obviously it just makes it a lot easier. So the first thing we'll do is a very basic table. Um, what we're going to do here is you can see this option here. If you hover over, obviously it shows you what one is. So if you go over, you can see we've got some charts, stack column chart, uh, pie charts. Uh, again, we'll be going over these in another video, but all we want here is this table one. So click table, and you can see it gives us this table option available to us here. And for table, it's very straightforward. All we need to do is just now pull into here all of the values that we want. You can do this by either clicking, selecting the tick box, or my personal preference, or just the way I do it, is literally just click and drag each file, so I've got employee ID and name, pull them into the values, and you can see that they are now displayed for us in, this, uh, in our table here. Uh, once you've got it in there, as you'll see, you click on the table and you've got these uh, arrows or the grab points around, so you've got one for each corner side. All you can do is click and drag, and then you can obviously make your table as big or put it wherever you wish to desire on your dashboard screen. So not to keep this video or make these two videos too long, um, that is the first part of this series. So you, hopefully you're able to obviously download the application and you've got a quick insight on how to get your first piece of albeit simple data onto the dashboard. In the next videos, we'll be going on how to actually pull multiple pieces of data in and have them join so you can obviously filter the data um, based on various different data sets altogether. And yeah, so we'll be going over that in our next videos and working with how we can put that data into charts. If you did enjoy this video, it'd be greatly appreciated by me if you would give it a like. And if you have any questions at all, drop, them, drop me a comment below this video and I will get back to you as soon as possible. So thank you very much and we'll see you in the next video.